Do you want your wireless access points communications to be fast, congestion-free, and tailored to your desired setup? That's where the advanced radio settings come in. Configuring these settings is helpful when our WAP is surrounded by other WAPs and settings like channel mode or frequency need to be changed to attain smooth communication. In this edition of Tech Talks, we'll show you just how to configure the advanced radio settings on the WAP 125. Next. Let's get started. First, we'll log into our WAP 125 device. Our default username and password are both Cisco. Once logged in, we'll need to head over to the wireless menu and select radio. On this page, we'll need to make sure we enable both radio options. After we save, we'll click OK on the confirmation pop-up. After that, we'll scroll down and click on the advanced settings. Here's where we can set the parameters. Our first setting, short guard interval, can be either yes or no. We'll keep it at yes. Next, the protection has the option to be auto or off. We'll keep it at the default mode of auto. Our next few settings are value-based. We can first enter the beacon interval. Beacon frames announce the presence of the wireless network. Note, it is recommended to keep the default value. A misconfigured beacon interval can cause clients to be unable to connect. The default value is 100, but it can range from 20 to 2000. Next, the DTIM period has a default value of 2, but can range from 1 to 255. The same goes for the fragmentation threshold. The default value is 2,346, and the range is from 256 to 2,346. For the RTS threshold, the default value is 65,535, and the range is 0 to 65,535. And finally, for max associated clients, the default value is 100 and ranges from 0 to 100. We can change any of these parameters based on our requirements. Next is the transmit power. It's full by default, but can be reduced to low, medium, or high transmit power. The frame burst support, which boosts downstream throughput, can either be turned on or off. The airtime fairness can also be turned on or off. It is by default turned on. The maximum utilization threshold by default is zero. However, the range can be from zero to 100. The zero value means it is disabled. We'll then need to choose a fixed multicast rate. It's auto by default, but we can choose any of the many options on the drop-down list. Next, we've got the legacy rate. We'll leave everything at the default values, but we have the options to change the supported and basic rates. By enabling the broadcast multicast rate limiting option, we can edit the rate limit and the rate limit burst. And finally, we can enable or disable the VHT features. At the bottom, we'll see the option to configure TSPEC. Once we click on it, we'll see even more options to configure. Those include the TSPEC violation interval, mode, voice ACM mode, voice ACM limit, video ACM mode, video ACM limit, AP inactivity timeout, station inactivity timeout, and legacy WMMQ map mode. After we've made the changes we want to make, we can click OK and then click Save on the previous page. We'll get a final message that the settings are about to be updated. After clicking OK to save those settings, the configuration will commence. And that's how to configure the advanced radio settings in a Cisco WAP 125. Thanks for watching Tech Talks from Cisco. We'll see you next time.